Imagine having built a home in the middle of the ocean. Might be a gorgeous and peaceful sight for the initial few months, but if you give it a deeper thought, yeah. The scenario is just better as a screenplay idea than something practical. But the reality is many men make a home in the middle of the ocean for almost the majority of each year. Yes, we're talking about sailors and Navy officials. This makes me wonder, how many officials can a massive aircraft carrier host? How much food do they eat to sustain themselves? Where and how do they sleep? Along with all of this, the question of how many toilets are available on an aircraft carrier, or officials make a home for several months in a go, also honestly seems like a reasonable discussion to have. Not only is the number of toilets interesting, defecation, I'm sorry, detection. But also questions like, what happens to the human waste collected? Is it directly disposed of in the sea or collected and disposed of elsewhere? If collected, how is the hygiene maintained? The questions that can spark curiosity regarding this topic are indeed endless. But don't worry, we've got you covered. Join us as we take you on a detour about everything you might need to know about toilets in an aircraft carrier. We won't keep you waiting for long as the reasons why you perhaps clicked this video is to know how many toilets does an aircraft carrier have. So let's give you some facts. Typically, massive aircraft carriers can hold up to more than 6,000 sailors in a single journey. That's the size of two tiny villages, but ironically, under 1,092 feet. Thus, basic necessities like food, water, sleep, and obviously hygiene means defecations are but the bare minimum one could ask for. Hence, there are around 432 toilets on the more enormous aircraft carriers, which honestly isn't a lot considering the amount of fully grown men the vessels need to house. But when you're literally in the middle of the ocean, you need to make the best out of everything. So with that question flushed out of our way, let's talk about something under the same category. What exactly happens to the waste material flushed? For this, we might need to state a rather unrelated story, but trust us, it will all make perfect sense at the very end. In the Navy, going to the loo is often called head call as a slang term. In spite of the silly name, the reason for this is pretty technical. The toilets on an aircraft carrier are actually called heads. The tradition began far back in the day as only the captains of the ship had a private restroom close to their quarters in the stern or the rear of the ship. The rest of the crew members had to use the toilet situated at the bow or the front of the aircraft carrier, a lot closer to the water line. The water from the ocean would help flush away any waste as the bathroom was installed in the ship's bow. Also, one needs to keep in mind that the vessels actually move in the opposite direction of the wind, hence the restrooms would always be located downwind to ensure no bad odors and foul smells stayed in the locale for any annoying amount of time. But as of today, technology has allowed modern ships to be equipped with the capacity of holding tanks and manual motorized pumps, allowing heads to be installed nearly anywhere on the ship. This head doesn't need the waves to wash off. It discharges out to sea despite the waste from the restrooms being easily washed into. We told you the story would make sense by the end. But even the process of flushing gets slightly complicated, technical, and even expensive when you're at sea. The waste from toilets goes through a systemic process before it being released into the sea. When a sailor flushes, it sets off a very long chain of processes that are all interlinked with one another. The process takes a significant amount of time, money, and even more infrastructure to assure that the waste is adequately cleansed and safe for disposal. The clearance of the flushed out sewage that has been produced aboard a carrier is one of the key take-ups on board and being the most disposable material on the vessel requires the highest attention to detail. The sewage yielded on board cannot be kept on it for an extended period for sanitary reasons and has to be discharged into the ocean as soon as possible. But here's the catch. One cannot simply dispose of the waste material into the sea with no treatment or cleansing. The US government has issued a new set of restrictions about the discharge of sewage that must be completed. Most of the sewage waste elicited on an aircraft carrier comes from the toilet, urinals, and WC scuppers. The regulations state that the sewage must first be cleansed before it can be expelled into the ocean, and the ship must be situated at least 
four nautical miles away from the closest shore to comply with this regulation. The same rule also applies to aircraft carriers. That's a few extra steps than our regular process at home, which just takes a couple of seconds and a push of a button. But we have something disturbingly interesting to ask you. How much sewage waste do you think is produced from the toilets of an aircraft carrier? Well, let's try to unpack this question with a real-life example. The Ford aircraft carrier, which is the USA's latest aircraft carrier, has an official complement of 4,539 sailors. Both the Marines and the sailors, obviously, defecate at even lace-based intervals. This might be too much information, but a lot of sailors like to start their day with a light stomach and use the washrooms right when they get up in the morning. For most of them, the entire process of what happens to this waste or how it needs to be treated and cleansed is as much news as it is for you and me. On ships, sanitary wastewater is divided into two categories, called black water or also popularly known as, surprise surprise, sewage. It is everything solid that's flushed down the toilet. The second kind is gray water, which refers to water that is collected from bathroom sinks, showers, as well as laundry and galleys or the kitchens. It's extremely important to treat the bilge water separately as it contains oils that have been discharged from the machinery located in the engine compartments and mixing them directly into the ocean would produce immense harm to marine life. When black water enters the integrated treatment system, it first travels through an aeration chamber or bioreactor. This chamber is filled with bacteria responsible for breaking down organic pollutants dissolved into the wastewater. The sewage is then pumped into a membrane filtering system which withdraws even more contaminants from the water to make it safer. The wastewater that the biofilter reactor has now sufficiently cleaned will be pushed into the next chamber which serves as the process of settling out the particles. After settling in the sedimentation tank, the mixture will be further separated into high-grade water and sediment. This process is followed by the processing in the clarity compartment which is often the hopper type and also has sloped sides which serve an important purpose. These sides prevent the sludge from popping and piling up instead of direct into the suction side of the airlift tube. The untreated sludge, which has been dropped to the bottom of the sedimentation tank, is pumped back into the biofilter reactor so that it can be broken down by microorganisms one final time. Well, if you thought this was it, you're completely wrong. Well, that went down the sink soon. No pun intended. The air blower is where the next set of treatment processes takes place. The biofilter reactor usually has two air blowers installed, one of which which serves as a standby and the other one is responsible for supplying air in the form of air bubbles. The air bubbles help in the transformation of microorganisms and also in flushing the sludge and transferring the sludge from the sedimentation tank as well as supplying air to the activated carbon tank. The treated sewage has to be passed through the discharge pump first, before it can be expelled into the ocean. The discharge pump is furnished in a duplex configuration, and its components are located in the STP's final chamber. They are the lawn clog type of centrifugal pumps that are connected to their motors. The level switches that have been installed on the sterilization tanks are what regulate the automatic mode of operation of the pump, which is usually run in manual mode when removing the sludge from compartments after cleaning the tank inside. Yes, we are finally close to the end. Following this process, the water is almost close to clean and sterile. The harmful germs and bacteria that could pollute the water are now fully removed and the water is fit for disposal in the ocean. But now the water is stored in a storage tank because gray water often only contains a small number of potentially harmful germs and it only requires minimum treatment before it is sent far out to sea. It might not come across as a surprise, but aircraft carriers have their toilets clogged a lot more than a regular person's. This happens because the waste cannot pass through as freely as in our homes. This is when the sailor flushes instead of the long processes that we just mentioned previously the solid matter, aka poop, doesn't go down at all. And this is very bad news for everyone on board. So to prevent it, new and advanced types of toilets are installed in the latest aircraft carriers. Along with this, the ship's sewage system is cleaned occasionally with the most specialized cleaning tools that at a cost of a whopping $400,000. That is some next level deep cleaning. 
According to a new congressional audit outlining $130 billion in underestimated long-term maintenance costs, the report suggests that the Senate Armed Services Committee requested from the Government Accountability Offices, or the GAO, the new toilet is reportedly experiencing a lot more unexpected and frequent clogging than usual due to unplanned maintenance. Thus, strict actions have been in process for the entire service life of the ship. Many also complain that the suction of the flush isn't strong enough and that the pipes are too narrow for the poop to go down fully, which only makes the problem even more severe. And that was it for this video, guys. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe to the channel to never miss another update from us. What was the most surprising part of this detour for you? Let us know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.